I'd like to now introduce Jean-Yves Legal, president of CNS, president of the International Astronautical Federation, and chair of the Council of the European Space Agency. He clearly knows a lot about what's going on out there. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jim, and uh, thank you, Francois, for your uh, very inspiring talk. I would like uh, to uh, say a few words, because you said that uh, on a smartphone you have a GPS, but now you have Galileo, because you probably remember that three, four years ago when I came here, I explained that uh, we used to say that uh, Galileo will be the European GPS, and today, I can tell you, we crossed uh, one billion users of Galileo, and we are in a world where, when we will speak about the GPS in two years, we will say that it is the US Galileo because of the huge accuracy. This is just a point I wanted to, to, on, on which I wanted to insist. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, uh, it's a nice transition uh, with uh, space industry because uh, when uh, we speak about uh, the topic of today, I think that uh, space is a good example. Space industry is uh, probably one of the youngest industries, but uh, in spite of that, uh, we have to face many uh, challenges. And uh, the first one is uh, the pace of uh, technological change driving our industry. I just want to take an example. The first modern rocket uh, lift off from uh, Pinamende in uh, Germany in 1942. And just 27 years later, in 1969, we are going to celebrate uh, this uh, human landing next uh, week uh, in DC with uh, Vice President Pence. Fifth, just uh, 27 years later, the men walked on the moon. And uh, if you put that uh, on, uh, for instance, uh, airlines, it means that uh, the first uh, Airbus A380 would have landed here in Marrakech in 1917. It's unbelievable, because 1917. Because it would be a very short period between the first flight of uh, an aircraft and the A380. And this is exactly what happened with space. But, uh, it is just apparent because uh, this uh, apparent uh, overnight success is in fact the result of many, many years of engineering efforts. Today, a lot of people speak about SpaceX and uh, reusable launchers. But uh, SpaceX and reusable launchers rely upon the Merlin engine, which have been developed by NASA 30 years ago. And uh, if there is just a message uh, uh, taking the point of Francois on the smartphone. Today, all of us, we use a smartphone, but we have to remember that they are built of an heritage that's already more than 10 years old. This is the first point. Second point, it's our second challenge, it's the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, this fourth industrial revolution apply, of course, uh, to uh, digitalization and globalization. Digitalization, it means that the mass of satellite and the cost of access to space decrease very, very strongly. Globalization, it means that more and more people everywhere in the world have now a space program. We are moving from a situation when 10 years ago we had just 10 space agencies to a situation when we have 60 space agencies. And uh, it is clear that uh, in this uh, expanding world, access to space is becoming ever easier. And this is a point also which is very, very important. Space in the past was just for an elite. Now it is almost for everybody. The third point is what I used to call the new post-truth media era. Because today, science value is no longer yardstick, but uh, we are told many, many things which are sometimes not really credible. For instance, people explain in the US at the highest level then. Uh, a woman will be walking on the moon again in 2024, and a man on Mars 10 years later. I can tell you that it ends not the truth. Unfortunately, one of my colleagues from NASA said the same. He has been fired immediately. But uh, the reality is that it will take uh, a lot of time to go back to the moon, and I don't even speak about Mars because it will be nobody knows when, even if some people explain this is for next year. But also, you see that we have these three challenges, technology, industrial revolution, and uh, post-truth media era. 
There is another point on which uh, I want to insist, and there will be a session dedicated to that a little bit later, is about uh, what is related to climate change. Because for climate change, space is very, very important because out of the 50 essential climate variables uh, which are defined to measure the climate, 26, which is more than half, can be observed just from space and with satellites. And France plays a leading role in this field. Uh, there was uh, the Paris Agreement in uh, 2015 under the leadership of uh, uh, Laurent Fabius, who will be there later on. We have uh, the One Planet Summit of uh, President uh, Emmanuel Macron, but it is clear that it is a point which is very, very important. And to conclude, I would like just uh, to remind you, you probably saw this picture which has been taken on the 24th of December 1968 by the astronauts of uh, Apollo 8 circling the moon, and we saw from the first time an Earthrise taken from the moon. And in this image, image, we have two messages. The first one is space, it's technology, but the second one, it is the point that uh, we have the fragility of our uh, little blue dot, which is totally alone in the vastness of space. And one, uh, once again, it's uh, a major challenge we have in front of us. Jean-Yves, merci. Thank you.